it is an amazing uh, approach to treatment. So I'm going to begin with a question that was emailed in, and then we'll see as questions keep coming in, we'll go from there. So my first question was really in general about doing the work of myofascial release in regards to our body's ergonomics. And it came from somebody who said she's small of frame and no matter how she jumps on the table or what angle she attempts to approach it, she finds that it's very difficult for her to reach without hurting her own body. She finds that she works too hard especially um, sometimes her low back, her arms, and her little tiny fingers. So I'm going to begin by just touching base on what I call therapeutic artistry, which is really one of the keystones in what I teach with the myofascial release work. And therapeutic artistry is really listening to your own body while you work and allowing your own body to find its way with the application of treatment. So obviously if somebody is larger framed or smaller framed, there may need to be adjustments to the technique. And the best thing to do is to center yourself, ground yourself, and really find that flow of ease within your own body without actually being able to witness somebody's posturing or put my hands on to really help find that flow and ease. It is a little difficult just through the conversation. But one key point is really to feel your, the backside of your body. So for those of you that are therapists joining that do this work, we're oftentimes using the front part of our body and we might be bent over a little bit if we're doing cross hand releases. So to really keep aware of that three dimensional aspect of our own body, the three dimensions of myofascial release are right to left, up and down and front to back. And remembering that with our own self that the center of our being, we work from our center, the center of our being includes the backside of us, aware of the backside of us, so that there's not so much forward bend and effort going forward. So it's not only a focus on the person that you're working on, but you're also bringing yourself into the treatment, being aware of your own body. So treating from a centered state really means that you are also aware of your own body and being kind to your body and allowing yourself to find your flow with that. And then practically speaking, I'm sure she's already using step stools or something of that nature that can assist us in getting some height and lean and reach as needed. So in general, that is uh, the opening and the beginning to uh, the question and answer. It's a little general. Um, I do want to let you know that if you do want to ask a question, go ahead and raise your hand on the chat or participant. Some of you, I think, are very Zoom efficient, and some of you may be a little bit new at it. So feel free to raise your hand, and there can also be some interchange and dialogue that we do, as well as if you want to type something in. So here is another one that says, I've been an LMT for over 20 years, healed from shoulder surgery the past year for a full tear of my supraspinatus. For the past few months, I've had right hip pain, which is sharp and has me now limping. Started in the hip flexor groin and now seems to be in the TFL. I recently had MFR and intense focus on my, on my flute, flute med on my Glute med, well, I don't know what that is, which kept releasing intensely. It is now affecting uh, gluteus medius. It is not, thank you. It is now affecting my quality of life. How might MFR help this? Um, okay, MFR, first of all, most likely can help this. The only way we know whether it can actually help or not is if we 
actually give it a try. And so um, first I would say that if you are doing this for yourself, you would like to apply either your own finger pressure or in the myofascial world, we like to use small therapeutic rubber balls, but you can use any kind of a device like the edge of a bed or the edge of a vegetable or, um, you know, a, a rolling pin even from your kitchen can work and you just find yourself maybe putting a towel over it so it's a little bit softer and just sink that part of your body into the pressure, whether it's your fingers or whether it's a supportive device, sink into the pressure. Here is really one of the keys to doing self-treatment. So applying pressure wherever we feel pain, tightness or tension and sustaining that pressure is the essence of myofascial release. Mm -hmm. But to do that for ourselves, we bring, we apply that pressure. But the key behind it is not just the external pressure on our body. The key is the energy that we bring to it. And so you've got to find a way to bring your own mind through your feeling self down into any part of your body. In this case, it would be the gluteus medius. Bring that part of you as if you are inside of that place really feeling and receiving the pressure, feeling the sensations. And a good question to ask yourself is, what does it feel like now that I've sunk my pressure into this or now that there's some pressure being sunk into my body? What is that feeling for my body? How is my body receiving that pressure? Oftentimes, if there's resistance or it feels like your tissue hardens, you're applying too much pressure. Your body can't quite handle it and it's setting up resistance holding patterns or bracing patterns. Um, so you wanna soften that a little bit. Definitely give it time, tune in and see how it feels. From there, it can take you many different places. If you can soften directly into it, then that's what you wanna do. You wanna let your body soften into it. Keep feeling, what are the sensations? What are the emotions? How does my body wanna move with this? If you feel like your body's wanting to move away or off of it, again, that's telling you that there's probably too much pressure there. So soften it out, see if you can come back sink into it a little bit more and uh, see if you can allow the tissue to begin to melt and soften. Um, and again, continuing to feel what is this response in my body? So just lying on some device for long periods of time will actually help you but only to a certain point, only when you really engage yourself, only when you engage your mind through your feeling self, will it have the most significant impact for you. It will be more efficient, your releases will be more efficient. And so just softening into that. Now let me just go back and read again. That was about applying self-treatment pressure. Of course, then I also wanna say, how might MFR help this? If you go to a practitioner who's trained in myofascial release, they're going to look at your whole body in a relationship. So it's not always the one spot that we think we're having problems with. Oftentimes uh, there's a whole complex going on. And so like you mentioned, you had a shoulder injury and a shoulder surgery and so believe it or not, there might be something going on still in your shoulder, even though you feel like it's healed, that is flaring up in your hip. Or there might be something in between your shoulder and hip that is creating uh, an imbalance and therefore pain in your hip or your glute. Um, could be an imbalance in parts of your legs. So it going to a myofascial release practitioner will give you that whole body perspective where 
hopefully they will either stand you up or lie you on the table and really look at all the inner relationships going on. And it's also okay to begin with pressure where you or your any of your patients are feeling pain. And then just seeing from there, what else is connected to it? The therapist might be able to feel what else is connected, but you, the patient, also have a responsibility to tune in and to take notice of what else is happening in your body. It may just be a, a pull somewhere else. It may be a tingling. It may be a heat response. Or you may feel like your body wants to start moving in a way to help release. And by all means, allow your body to begin moving. A, a, a myofascial release trained therapist will know how to follow and support that movement and give you the support that is necessary to release not only where you're feeling pain, but oftentimes the pain, uh, the cause of that pain doesn't hurt at all. And it's hidden or it's buried in the body. And so a trained therapist will help guide you into that place within your body. They also mentioned Theracane. Yes, that's another great tool that you could use um, to help release different places in your body. Theracane is great to get to your own back because it has a nice hook on it that can hook around to the posterior side of your body. Also great in curved areas like the shoulders and the hips or the glutes like we're mentioning. Okay, and if anybody wants, if anybody is struggling with your own pain, whether you're a therapist or a patient, I'm also happy to do some interaction, some dialoguing with you and just see if we can actually practice going through tuning in and finding our own pain release, kind of doing a little online therapy session. I'm happy to do that as well and, and see what, what shows up or what happens. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so for the last 15 years, is this, is this a question to ask or is she just, how would it help them? Yeah, I think she's asking a question. Um, sometimes I know on these chats, I've been on other Zoom calls and people are talking to each other on the chats. So maybe it would be helpful. I haven't said like, no, it's so sweet. you be able to check out my table height. Ah, would I be able to check out your table height? Okay, so um, I think if it's to everyone, I'm just going to read them. We're just gonna go with that. And if it's to somebody else, we'll figure it out as we go. That's a question. Yeah. Okay, so she says, for the last 15 years, she's been doing cranial sacral reflexology, pregnancy massage. Our daughter's husband and myself were just diagnosed with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. It's a connective tissue disorder. And we were told that MFR and trigger point therapy would help. I know very little about this. How would it help? And what do I look for in a class or program? So how would it help if you are treating them with it that you're looking for a class or program and how to help with this type of disorder, I think is what you're asking. Um, so, okay, this is, a, this is a more challenging one. It has to do with your whole, yeah, the whole system. There is some slack that happens. So what you really wanna do is a similar to all of the types that we work on. So keep in mind that that is a significant specific diagnosis, but keep in mind that when we're using myofascial release to treat, we're not as concerned with the specific diagnosis. Keep that in mind when somebody comes into you and you're like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what to do with that. Of course, we can always Google that nowadays. Um, but remember that you're looking at their whole body system and you're feeling for what areas are hard, tight, tense, thick, restricted. So when they're loose or hypermobile, those are not so much the areas we wanna do releasing work, but we, we may wanna do supportive, facilitative, or connecting work with those places. So transverse planes would be really beneficial around joints that are too slack, but there's also going to be places in between 
the slack places that may indeed be too tight. Although this has more to do with something going on in their system. So definitely cranial sacral release is really good. Just listening for that flow of energy, where, what, what's happening in their system? What's happening that is, um, you know, part of this whole healing process. It may even be that you start some treatment around how are they feeling in regards to this diagnosis rather than specifically treating the diagnosis. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot more we could go with that. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I would definitely start treating them. I would definitely start very gently and listen, listen to what starts to show up, what shows up for them uh, as you begin treating them. So if you already know cranial sacral therapy, just start by listening to what's the energetic rhythms in their body and where are things locked or lockdown is where you would start doing very gentle myofascial release work. I'm guessing there's going to be emotions that are going to come up and surface as a result of just simply having the diagnosis and what the condition is bringing to their situation. So if you want to get more specific with that, um, I'm happy to send me an email specifically or jump on a uh, personal call with me, that's also possible. Um, or keep giving me some more questions down there and we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. It definitely can help. And I would definitely start by um, seeing them as a whole person, really seeing them as a whole person and then finding within their wholeness, where's the fears, where's the emotions, where's the restrictions and where are the lack of support, where's there too much uh, mobility or, or, or um, hypermobility is a lack of support in their system. And so they need your hands to come in there and give them the feeling of what does support feel like. So their energy can find their way back into their physical body. I hope that makes some form of sense, but that's how I get started with it. And then what uncovers is you know, what happens as you progress with treatment. Okay, so somebody's been having some left neck and shoulder pain. I'd be happy to maybe try doing that a little bit. Yes, I'll look at your table height. So let's see if we can find that from, let's see, I just wanna work on my feeling alerts. I have so much pain. Okay, so let's, let's just take, um, how long should I use the ball to put pressure on my pain points? Okay, let me ask that. Let me answer that one first because that's quick and easy. And then I'll take a couple of you that feel like you're struggling with pain and let's see what, let's see what comes out of it. And I want to say that while I said you can ask any kind of a question, you can ask any kind of a question, doesn't necessarily mean I will have the answer that you're looking for, but we're going to brainstorm. We're going to see if we can start to maybe turn on some light bulbs, get some ahas. And um, yeah, I'm happy for people to also give your own suggestions there as well. Okay, so if you do your own release, how long should I use the ball to put pressure on pain points? That's an excellent question. And my general answer is going to be however long it feels good for you to leave it there. And so in myofascial release, we tend to use the rule of thumb three to five minutes or sometimes up to eight to 10 minutes now. We say that it takes 90 to 120 seconds for the collagenous aspect of the fascial system to begin releasing. So we wanna stay on it longer to give it a chance to release. Keep in mind that while we're treating fascia, fascia covers every other system in the body, not, not covering it in the way that you would wrap something up in it, but it, it impacts and it influences every other system in the body. And so we're also dealing, we're dealing with the energy of our body. We're dealing with the fluid flow of our body. We're dealing with the muscles of our body and we're dealing with the elastic component of the fascial system. All of those elements 
might not take as long. So you might feel like you're sitting on a, on a ball or, a, or some type, something that you're using for pressure and you don't need to last. You don't need to sit there on that one specific spot for eight to 10 minutes. You might need to be there for 30 seconds and then make a micro adjustment, shift your body in some way. You're still applying pressure into the myofascial system, but for that specific point, you might be able to kind of shift. So it's very important to keep feeling what's happening in your body to get the best results. Not about checking out and setting a timer and letting the time do its ticking. We're not just doing time here, right? We're not in jail doing time. We are bringing ourselves into the picture. We're bringing ourselves back to life with self-treatment to allow our system to wake up and feel some of those places that have gotten locked up or bound up twisted and knotted. So I hope that answers the question <laughs> with a little bit, not just a recipe, but with a little bit of dynamic element. That's what I really want to emphasize is keep tuning in and listening to the dynamic element within each of your own bodies, because that's where the real answers, that's where the real solutions actually lie. And a skilled therapist is there to help you find those solutions and those answers inside of you, but they really are inside of you. Okay, so that was a great question. I am going to see if, Katie, do you want to do some work with your left neck and shoulder on this call or You'd have to, what would you have to do? Raise your hand. She's saying, talking to yourself. That was helpful. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So what do I do now? Ask her, uh, ask her to unmute herself. Okay. So Katie, I'm going to start with you. We're going to just explore this a little bit. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Okay. That's a great welcome. I like having somebody to interact with a little bit. It feels a little bit <laughs> talking to a blank computer screen. I mean, it's not blank, but quiet computer screen. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I'll be fine here now. I'm going to move slightly because my kids are a little bit loud. Okay. We don't mind the little child noise in the background. Okay. So I'm going to talk Katie through it and deal specifically with Katie, but I'm going to invite each of you to find your own place inside of your body that might be signaling you that it wants some attention. You might just take a moment and scan through and see where am I feeling either some pain in this moment, not where you think you might have pain regularly or yesterday, but where do you feel like you have pain in this moment? And if you don't have a pain, maybe you have something that aches a little bit or that is showing up to you right now in this moment with some tightness or some tension, or just a sensation that is starting to say hello to you, asking for some attention. And just see what, what I do with Katie may not have direct impact with you, but just see if you can start to allow that part of your body to rise to the surface so that it can be worked with. It's, it's putting its own hand up, asking for some attention. In general, that's what pain Pain is actually asking for attention. So we're gonna see if we can give it a little attention. So Katie, I'm gonna have you just tune in and see is it indeed, what is it indeed in your neck? And I can't remember if you said shoulder, but where, where in this moment are you noticing pain or discomfort of some sort? Um, I feel it in the left side of my neck, um, kind of upper trap and normally into my rotator cuff when I'm just resting, it doesn't hurt there. But as I even just was listening to you, I could feel that it was kind of um, like there was some connection down the whole kind of thoracic spine. And I also felt a little tug at my tailbone where I had some issues which had resolved. So that was kind of interesting how I could just kind of 
follow it down a little bit. Okay, beautiful. So she's beautifully tuning into her body and she's getting some more awarenesses that we don't often notice when we just focus on the part that feels pain. Mm -hmm. So just let's tune in to that part on the left side of your neck, coming down into your trap. It sounds like it, there's a use element to it so that when you use it, it kind of flares things up. So your, your upper trap may be trying to give your rotator cuff some support by firing a little bit extra, but then through that extra support it's attempting mm -hmm. to give you, it yanks on your head and neck a bit. So just keep tuning into that. You also mentioned down your thoracic spine and your backside all the way down to your tailbone. Just continuing to allow yourself to feel what's happening in your own body. And as we give her time, each of you listening, take this opportunity now. Take this opportunity to tune in and give your own body the time and attention that it's seeking. And this is also how we do self-treatment. We simply give ourselves time. And you can do this. You don't have to plan a lot of extra time in your day. I mean, obviously, if you're really struggling with something, that's ideal. But what if you just took a moment while you're sitting at a stoplight and you just took that opportunity while you're sitting at a stoplight and you really ask, what am I noticing in my body right now in this moment? And just take a little time with that. And we might not get so frustrated when um, it's a really long stoplight. <laughs> we might start to celebrate the really long stoplights. Okay, so is there anything that you can report that you're noticing happening in your body? Yeah. it feels like, um, I felt like I was trying to turn towards the left, like rotate my trunk. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm starting to feel it like actually in my pec, like almost at the insertion. Mm -hmm. um, it feels, I feel tightness there. Okay, um, so you automatically put your hand there. I'm gonna encourage you if you can, if it's okay at your right arm, yep, keep your hand there and just apply, mm -hmm. light, light, almost like a, like just the weight of gravity there, not, not so much effort digging in, just the weight to bring your a little more attention to it. And then I think you were starting to say something else. So if it's um, significant, go ahead. And if not, just- Yeah, I'm not sure it's just, but I can, it's, I feel like, like weird pressure changing in my ears. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I don't know what that's about, but. <laughs> All right, so just keep noticing that. Just keep noticing the weird pressure changes in your ears. <laughs> and I'm gonna encourage you, just really listen. Okay, the ears are there for our listening. So listen in. And see how that, those ch pressure changes in your ear might have a relationship with that pec area in particular, but it could also be with the left side of your neck or your upper trap or anywhere that you've mentioned or even somewhere that you haven't mentioned yet. Just kind of notice and listen. What is your body wanting you to hear about itself or maybe what is your body wanting you to know about itself?
So for those of you therapists that are treating people in the physical again, encouraging them to feel into their body and listen into their body and allowing your own hand pressures and your own, what would I say, your own um, patience, your own patience to give them the space. It takes time to really feel into our bodies. It takes time to connect with places that have been restricted or are in pain. Most of the time we're running away from places that we feel pain. And so it takes time to bring ourselves back into that place in our body and start to feel. And so just being there as a supportive presence is pretty incredible. And for those of you that might be doing some virtual sessions like this, it is possible. It's possible to help talk people into their body and have help direct them to treat themselves. Really, it requires them to take a little more responsibility than if you were there helping do it for them. So just kind of giving them that time permission to get quiet with their body and to sit quietly with them and to encourage them to feel what's happening. And if there's any movement that wants to happen, just follow that, Katie, or any of you that are also tuning in and doing this exercise for yourself. You may also take a moment and notice what's happening with your breath in relationship to your, what you're feeling right now. So I'm not asking her to take a deep breath. I'm asking her to pay attention to what's happening with her breath. What might be, is, is there much breath going into this part of your body? Now, it I can I can feel now like it feels like the back of my like my thoracic spine feels very tight and stuck mm -hmm. and there's um and I feel like I don't really know how to like what to do or what how to relax it mm -hmm. okay so let's do this so it feels stuck the back part of her you said thoracic spine yeah and even up into my neck I feel like yeah frozen there. Stuck. All right. So the first thing I want you to do is just feel what it's like to be stuck and frozen. Just feel that stuckness and frozenness. And we're not going to try and make it go away or fix it or change it yet. Okay. okay. Just feel into the frozen nature, feel into the stuckness and ask yourself, how does it feel to be stuck and frozen? Yeah, not good. It feels very like, like it's very brittle almost. Mm. Okay. So with that type of feedback, I'm not going to have her like instinctively initially, I might've suggested that, oh, she try to activate and push into that stuck place and see if we can get it working. But she's giving this feedback that it might even be a little brittle. So that right away says to me, oh, we want to move very gently. We want to treat this with maybe a little sense of fragility. So really very gently, very gently acknowledge that brittleness, acknowledge that it would be really valuable to be really tender and gentle with this stuck frozen place. Generally, when places are stuck and frozen, we have a bit of distance from it. So the energy that belongs in that part of her tissue that is stuck and frozen is hardened, for sure, it's hardened, but it may be a little bit 
stuck together or it may be removed, which is why it's stuck and frozen. And so it's kind of like taking our time, finding where is the vital life force that belongs in this part of her body. And again, it may be that it is stuck within, frozen within, but it also may be that it's outside of her or in some other part of her body. And that's why it's become frozen and stuck. It's like the engine that belongs there is not able to turn on. We can't start the engine there. So there's nothing flowing. Was there anything that the brittleness would like to say or share with you? Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like I don't want it to be like that anymore. <laughs> it doesn't want to be like that anymore. <laughs> okay, so let's just ask it. Let's just okay. ask it, what do you need? Okay. We could ask it, how would it like to be? Maybe we start with that because we know it doesn't want to be that way anymore. Okay. So how would it like to be? Soft. Okay. So why don't you say, I acknowledge that you would like to be soft okay. and I'd like your assistance in how to help you get there. So what do you need in order to find your softness again? Or maybe for the first time, maybe it's not even again, maybe it's to find your softness for the first time. It, it's interesting now it it feels like I'm very like stuck now but like at the back of my neck there it just feels like there's like a hand kind of gripping back there as I kind of try to go there with that okay so I'm going to encourage you to feel that hand gripping you at the back of the neck and then feel what's your response to that hand gripping you? How, how is that for you that there's a hand gripping you at the back of your neck? It feels like a lot more tension, like coming back and even like through my hands here, kind of where I have them pushing kind of right over my heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what I'm going to have you do is can you very gently and very slowly exaggerate that tension that you're feeling there underneath your hand on your heart? Can you make it even more tense, but just gradually and gently to see if that's okay for you? Yeah, that it feels a little bit difficult to go there, okay. actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, there's probably some stuff in there, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm <laughs> Okay, right. So there's some stuff in there. So I'm going to encourage you, yes, to keep feeling. I'm going to take the pressure off of you right now in front of the whole group. Um, <laughs> but we got somewhere. We moved with it. So there's yeah, something yeah. there that is in a little different place than where she originally started feeling the pain that's contributing to her pain. So 
I'm gonna let her work with that. If you wanna work more privately, you can uh, email me later. Um, but you can keep working as we answer other people's questions or maybe I give it another try with somebody else right now and you just keep kind of working on feeling or, you know, give yourself, I don't know if it's because we're, you're not quite ready to go there or because you're kind of in front of a bunch of people. So um, <laughs> you can also give, like just acknowledge where you're, if it's, if it's because you're in front of a lot of people then just keep doing it on your own, of course, or find somebody that can work with you privately. If it's because you've come to a place and you're like, your body says, I don't want to go there right now. Like, I'm not ready for that. I, I don't, I don't want to deal with that right now. Then before you end, I want you to acknowledge where you are now, where you've come, like how the progress has occurred. And just say you honor that it doesn't want to go any further for this time period and that you'll pick it up on another day, it might be later today, it might be in a week, it might be in a month, all of a sudden you do feel ready. You're like, I'm ready to go there and your body's going to signal you to do that. That's cool. And so bringing that into a treatment session, you know, sometimes we have to end our treatment sessions and the person is still, like they've still got stuff going on. And so to bring some closure to a treatment session by saying, okay, this is as far as we're going to go today. Um, let's just sit with this, sit with this how it is, let your body integrate and see if over time your body might give you some more messages or maybe it will, just by acknowledging it and honoring that it wants to put a, a stop or a break there is so therapeutic and it's so helpful for setting a boundary. It's not always about getting there as fast as we can with as much force as we can, obviously not with as much force as we can, uh, but just really giving our system, that's the whole of us, that's our body, that's our fascial system, that's our energy, that's our mind, that's our soul and spirit, just giving it permission to unfold in its own flow, in its own timing. And there's a space that we give that when, when you do that, it allows a space to come in that takes the pressure off. And oftentimes then things can soften quite a bit easier than when we're trying to put pressure on it to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That was, that was very helpful. That was very fun. So thank you for participating, you. For volunteering yeah, to participate. Cool. Um, so let's see, somebody else said, it looks like it's somebody's on their iPhone, Lori, that have so much pain in your lower back and medial scalp that may have shifted since we just worked with Katie. Um, I don't know if you would like to have a session right now and we can try somebody else. Um, I'll wait and see for you for a moment. And then I do see, um, yeah, I'll wait and see for a moment. I will say, she says it's, she thinks it's postural for seeing clients so much throughout the day. And I did get another email question that I will also address along those same lines. Um, it said she just hurts while working. She does her own self-care following work, but it's difficult sometimes on those days when she's super busy, both with work and then has to come home to be with her children and her family and do all of those activities how does she still have the energy for all of this going on in her life? That's a huge question. And I think um, what so many of us deal with and why so many people actually kind of felt a huge relief uh, when we had the great pause that happened because of the pandemic. And now we're kind of start being more active again. It's like finding that balance again between taking care of ourselves, taking care of our responsibilities, which includes work and family and still having some fun in life, right? Enjoyment, some pleasure in life. So what do we say about that? That's a big one. Um, again, I think I like to really bring self-care into as many moments of the day as you can. So rather than thinking of self-care as something that you have to set aside time for, 
separate from all your responsibilities, I want to invite you to bring self-care into all of your responsibilities. Now, sometimes that's easier and sometimes that's harder than others, but what does that really mean? So let's say you, we'll start with, let's say you're treating somebody. So it's kind of like what I talked about at the beginning, you're treating somebody, bring your own, really being centered when we treat somebody, so what are we centering on? We can center on the patient or the client and their wellness. But if we're coming from a centered place, that means we're inside of ourself. We're inside of our own body. So we bring our body into the picture. Don't feel like you have to separate yourself from the treatment. Bring yourself in and take care of yourself while you treat. I really do not recommend suffering for the sake of helping somebody else heal. I think you should let that one go out the window and always adjust your body and find a way that makes it easier for you, easier in the flow for you. That's really one of the things that I focus on in most all of my seminars is how to make it work for you. And when you are comfortable, when you are more comfortable and centered, your treatment is going to have more impact. It's actually going to be a more powerful treatment. So definitely take care of yourself there. But also, let's say you have a lot of children, and sometimes we think, oh, we have to get ourselves out of the way in order to tend to our children. No, bring yourself into the picture with the children. Maybe you have to call on your own inner child to come in. Maybe it's, again, just finding how much can I be inside feeling myself while I feed my children, while I make sure they all get in the car so that we can get to the appointment on time, while... Uh, did I say fixing dinner or feeding yourself or, you know, just bring yourself into that. What am I feeling in this moment? And it's okay to tell your children sometimes what you're feeling. Like, oh, I'm feeling a little frustrated right now or I'm feeling a little tired right now. And I could really use your help. Like that's beautiful to do that. Maybe you're on a computer. So that's even harder. You're on the computer, you're on what's on the computer screen. How do we take care of ourselves then? Again, it comes back to, either taking a mo I mean, as much as you can feel in your body, but when we're focused on something else, sometimes we forget. And then that's why we hurt later because we haven't been paying attention to our body. So it's about maybe taking those few little breaks and just stopping and looking out the window or looking at a, a beautiful picture that you have on the wall or standing up and stretching. Maybe everybody now, I don't know if most of you are sitting, maybe everybody right now should just stand up and feel what's happening in your own body. Maybe just weight shift a little bit or jiggle or shake it out a little bit or maybe just do a real gentle stretch. It doesn't have to take an hour to do self-care. That's a lovely devoted time to give yourself and I'm not discouraging that. <laughs> but I am encouraging you to bring more of yourself to each moment of your day. See if that doesn't help. Getting kids into the car is the worst. <laughs> yes, I agree. And I have a teenager and sometimes I can't get him in the car. <laughs> All right, so I didn't hear from the one that was having back pain earlier. Is there anybody else that would like to raise your hand and ask a question or just be asking a question or if there's some kind of pain going on within yourself that you would like to address? And I would also, while I'm waiting for somebody to raise their hand and volunteer, um, I would also really appreciate if you could put in the chat uh, just maybe some other things that you might be interested in, if this is valuable or not for you. Um, you know, I'm considering if it has value, I would consider doing it again. And, and if we could have a little more thoughts about what you might want to put some attention onto, we could maybe have different themes. So any input, anything that comes to you while we're all here together, all here together, what else can we do while we're all here together? Maybe I just talk everybody through a little exercise. Um, yes, it is po possible to treat via Zoom and um, it does require the person that you're working with to take a little more accountability. It actually requires them to tune in to their own body 
even more than when they're lying on the table underneath your hands. So sometimes you reach a place where you, you know, you just can't get any further. And if you had your hands to do the work, it might make a significant difference. And sometimes you can actually help them go a little deeper because it's just a different way of approaching the situation. One thing I will say in general, when you are uh, working with somebody, whether it's in the physical or whether it's on the phone or on Zoom or however people want to make contact with you, um, is using their words. So when they say what's going on with them, what's happening in their situation or what they're feeling in their body, kind of try and bring it back to them and repeat what, what words they used. So I did that as much as possible with Katie. And then it's, it's always okay to try and get clarity also and to see if you can ask some questions to help them get that clarity. And sometimes you might give them some alternatives, like, like they maybe can't quite get the sense of, I don't know what I'm feeling, right? That's usually what it is. I don't even know what I'm feeling. I can't quite access it. So sometimes you might give them some suggestions. And a lot of times, you know, they start out by saying, well, it just feels tight or it feels painful. So you might kind of say, well, what type of pain are you experiencing? There's a thousand different types of pain. And for me to be able to understand so that I can help you with what you're going through, I need a little more detail. So let's see if we can kind of dissect what you're feeling with the pain and, and gather a few more details. Okay, I think I have some questions. Um, we hope there will be a replay, <laughs> um, but we're still learning. So hopefully we'll be able to do that and send it out. What to do with symptoms associated with tennis elbow. Okay, so tennis elbow is generally the latter side of the elbow and golfer's elbow is usually the medial or inside side of the elbow. Um, it doesn't matter. Sometimes people say tennis elbow and it's just some pain somewhere in their elbow. Um, so what would you do with that? Well, again, I would start by asking them to feel that pain in that part of their body, in their elbow. I would have them feel that pain and then see if they could describe to me a little bit more about it. And if you're working with them in the physical, I would take my own hand and place it on, place it on their body, wherever they tell me they're feeling pain. And I might kind of search for it. Let your fingers do the walking and find that place. I don't really have elbow pain right now, but find that place. And if you're working with them long distance, just ask them to put their own hand on it. And then just sink in as much as they feel they can handle by going into the pain, slowly and softly going into the pain. And then feeling, so if I'm the one treating them, I would be asking them, how's the pressure? Is the pressure on the right place? Would more pressure help? And I would give them more pressure or does a little softer pressure help you connect to it? And just see what their feedback is. Can they give you some feedback? And then um, it's about really finding how that arm might wanna move in order to get the best releasing. So again, if I'm the one doing the treatment, it's gonna be how do I move that arm? I may keep pressure right there on the elbow, but I may also then treat above or below a lot of times it's forearm. A lot of times it's forearm stuff going on. But also then, just like with all my fascial release treatment, we're gonna look at the whole body. So maybe it's something up in the pec, just like Katie it kind of started moving around. Maybe it's in the backside of the shoulder blade. And so we're using that, that forearm more, more than we need to, or we ought to be using more of the whole shoulder girdle. Maybe it's down in our abdominal psoas, area. It's hard to say uh, how to keep going with it, but that's how I would start with treating that and then keep feeling and getting feedback from the, the, 
person that you're working with, on where else do they notice a connection to their body? But definitely start by applying pressure to the pain, finding how much pressure, what angle of pressure, and then is there a type of movement that wants to occur? And it all comes through listening to the body. It's not like, okay, I wanna move the arm this, this way and then lift it up and then cross it over. That may or may not help. And 10 different people could all come in with tennis elbow and they may need 10 different types of movement. And that's where the skill, the skill of, of being able to listen to your own body, and that can be learned. That's definitely something that is learned. And the skill from a therapist being able to help you find those angles comes in and how it connects to the rest of your body. Okay, let's see. What time are we at? Oh, so we only have, I've noticed now that I'm back to work, I know this is my she's in some deeper work, but it starts. Okay, so I'm gonna just address this and then I, I am gonna, even if there's more questions, maybe we'll take it into another time. If people feel like it was valuable, I would appreciate any feedback. Um, I am starting a Facebook group called Myofascial Solutions. So you might be able to go Google and join in on that Facebook group and help give each other suggestions as well or ask questions. Um, Maybe we'll send something out about that, right? That Ashley, maybe idea. Ashley will send something out about that. We'll, we'll focus on you. So I wanna be respectful to people's time. When I say an hour, I'm gonna to stick to an hour, but I'm going to take, I might go a couple minutes over now after I say that. And just address the, the question about back to work. People are coming back after not coming in for a while and it seems like they're wanting heavier work. Things have gotten really tight and solidified in our bodies um, without as much repetition. So again, here's what I'm gonna to say to that. When people ask for more pressure, they want it deeper, they want it harder. That's something that is a significant in the world of a therapist. Like we don't feel like we can go quite hard or deep enough from what they want. And that is all about bringing them into the picture. They have to start feeling your body. So you, I usually lean on them a little heavier when they ask for more pressure. I find a way for my body to lean into them a little heavier. And then I ask them to meet my pressure from the inside. Meet my pressure from the inside. It requires them to come in and join the session. Otherwise they're just asking you to do it all for them. And you can do that if you want. And that's how you set up your practice. But I'm here to encourage you to bring them in, make it a little bit easier on you. Usually I can apply a little more pressure for short periods of time, but not throughout the whole session. So that would be my encouragement with when they need heavier pressure than you think you can give. Give it to them for a few moments, ask them to come in and meet your pressure, maybe even push against you a little bit, ask them to push against you and then um, uh, see if maybe they can handle a little bit gentler pressure after that. Or then you say, okay, now I feel like your body is giving me the feedback that gentler pressure would actually be more effective. So let's try that and encourage them to tune in to what they feel when you try that. And then see if maybe they can start to shift that way a little bit and make some suggestions for them in that way. Okay. So it is 2.01. I am so grateful for all of you taking the time to join me. Um, it has been fun. I'd like to find a way to get a little more interaction going. So it feels like we're actually all in this together. Um, I'll work on that. And I'm open to feedback. And um, have a very blessed day. Take some time to tune into your own body. Give your own body a little love and attention. And um, hopefully I will see you sometime in the future. Come and visit Sedona. <laughs> all right, bye. I think there's supposed to be a way you can unmute everybody and they all say goodbye at the same time. <laughs> We're still learning. If I have Zoom experts out there, call Thank them. you, it was great. <laughs> Thank is you. The Facebook is the Facebook page Myofascial Solutions Thank up and you. running? I'm it's still a private group. Oh, we're working on that. We'll get that out and we'll send we'll send a notice out. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you, Lori. You.
You're welcome. Good to see everybody as much as I could see you all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Just click in. No hit record or anything.